Okay, team, in this video, I want to share with you the new volume bot that will be out and available and ready to go in early August. And what this bot does is it trades long and short, just like the others. It takes multiple trades a day, but it has one very, very unique characteristic. And I'm going to run through the inputs with you guys real quick. The first thing is just like the gap bot, another premium bot that I offer, you can trade multiple assets. So in this case, I'm testing it, running it on uh, the actual indexes. So I'm specifying three different indexes here, three different um, tickers to trade. And um, I can tell it to either use the assets listed here or the current asset meaning whatever specified over here. And uh, you can allow multiple, or you can just say, just pick one. So it'll, if it's in one, it won't be in the other, or allow multiple open orders. Uh, the asset class, of course, is like what we have in the rest of the bots. It's currently set to indexes because we're trading indexes. Uh, the trade type, it actually allows for a little bit of custom behavior between the opening range breakout and the snapback. By default, it is set to the orb. You can, in this one, pick a direction. You can say, you know, long, short, or automatic. And so you can work that in, con you know, in, con in congruence with the, the strategy, kind of the trade type there as well. Uh, now, the, the rest of these three couple settings here are unique for this bot. And I'm going to circle back to these in just a minute. But you guys can see that the profit taker, the stop loss padding, and the cancel after uh, candles, five candles, those are pretty standard. In this case, I'm running a uh, $5,000 risk. I'm running a 500K account, and then I'm using a half half lot size. And, uh, and then if we were to scroll down a little bit more here, we'll see that we do have, um, let's see, we have some additional settings here. You can turn this on and off certain days. Uh, the thing that is unique to this also is the trading start time and end time. As most of you know, the volume spikes seriously at the beginning of the, like at the very open, uh, the market open. And on things like stocks or indexes, there's huge volume during that time. But in this case, we want to set it and I have it set to kind of ignore the actual opening start time a little bit. So it's going to ignore that because the orb bot can pick that up and trade that easily. This is kind of a, a slightly different behavior. And of course you can send the additional uh, buy and sell signals to, um, to uh, uh, traders post in this example. So, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the three settings here that are super unique. And I'll walk you guys through here in a sec how this works for you know, like how it actually plays out and we'll watch it trade. But these three settings are unique. The first one is uh, the candle count after spike. So what it's doing is it's looking for volume, 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 and it's looking back X number of candles to kind of calculate what is like the average volume, right? The average volume uh, and they call it tick volume in MetaTrader 5. So we're looking at the tick volume. And in this case, what we're looking for is a 3x. So we're looking, and these are all settings you guys can change, but we're looking for a 3, 3x or maybe a 300% spike. So if I was to add, uh, let's see, I can go into this chart and add, I think I can add the volume on here. So tick volumes, there you go. So you guys will see at the bottom, None of this looks super out of the ordinary, right? All this looks kind of average. And what it's saying is I'm looking, I'm going to go back seven candles and I'm going to use seven candles as the average, but I only want to know when it, when there's a three X or 300% spike in candles. So for example, if all these candles go like this and there's a huge volume spike right here. So then the next setting, of course, seven candles is what we're going to look back kind of to calculate my average, right? Go back seven candles to calculate the average. And we're looking for that three X or three times volume spike multiplier. And then the final setting here is how many candles after the spike 
do I want to trade? So as you guys know, uh, you don't really know if it's a volume spike until the, the candle is closed. And so if we have a huge spike over here, what, what the bot is going to do is we're going to say, we're going to wait six candles. So one, two, three, four, five, six candles. And then we want to play this candle. Like in this case, this would be the automatically trade the open range breakout. So long or short, it'll dynamically calculate that and look for kind of this move higher that happened here. And so that's the basics of how this works. Again, I'm going to show you guys in a sec how to actually jump into this and we'll, we'll, we'll watch this uh, take some trades. But first what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave some defaults in here. We're gonna look at um, the current list here. We're gonna just run a quick test and we're gonna watch this volume, this equity graph to see how well it works. Obviously there's ups, there's downs. And this is really ideal for, as you guys know, on Wednesdays, there's usually some kind of interest rate, FOMC, is always something super volatile on Wednesday. But what I've noticed when running this bot and practicing and using some of these tools is that not only is it volatile on Wednesday, but it actually happens to be volatile the day before and the day after. So basically Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, tend to be the most volatile, crazy volume, ridiculous, all over the place moves. And the volume bot that we're talking about here, this is ideal to try to capture and take advantage of this. So this doesn't really have anything to do with interest rates, but all of those interest rate, all those decisions, all the, those meetings and announcements typically happen on Wednesday. And so there's a lot of volume the day before and the day after. So people trying to get in before, people trying to get out the day after. And so in this case, of course, you can run it whatever day you want. But in this case, uh, I've noticed that it tends to work better on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And in this case, uh, I'm running it and testing it on some indexes here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and look at some of the trades real quick. And we'll grab uh, some of the, the details out of here. So you guys will see here that the SPX 500, the UK 100, as you may notice, this does trade multiple multiple assets in this single. So you don't have to worry about combining two different back tests together to figure out what is your real drawdown, what is your real return, all the ups and downs from two separate back tests, trying to merge them, blend them together. In this case, this kind of it trades multiple assets, and that's kind of why it's a premium bot. And it allows for um, for trades to be combined, and uh, you can define how you how you want this to to behave. You want multiple assets, just single. And in this case, you'll notice that even though I have a 50k account, I'm really only using 25. So I'm using half lots. So if I have two trades at the same time, where I have 50 max, 25 and 25 is 50. So I'm right there at the limit. I'm not having to worry about you know, one of these, um, the back test working fine. And then the real trades kick me out. Uh, if I'm going over my max lot size, like in the real world in a, a paper or, or an assessment, um, or live account. So that's, that's kind of how that works. And then, uh, you do have these, the other thing that's unique is the, that time. So there's not a close time like close, but you can define what time frame you want it to look at to pay attention to and in this case uh, i have it running here just a handful of hours and so even though these indexes trade i think it's about 23 hours a day five days a week let's double check let's go to specification scroll down uh yeah so about 23 hours a day five days a week i'm really only looking at a small kind of window of, of time in in here and uh, not only will, uh, if, if it has an open trade and the, uh, the 2245, this end time comes, it'll just auto exit the trade, right? Because I'm saying I only want to trade in these, in this single slice of time. I don't really want to include market opens or anything like that. I just want to only trade kind of the narrow middle part of the day with these assets because you don't really want to have super low volume and then 
some little three X spike, you know, you don't want to say I have, you know, it's trading 10 shares and we have 30 shares trading. So let's jump in. That's a super low volume. And so that's the reason for the time frame. Kind of that focus is to kind of provide time that you know that the volume is going to be significant enough to really be believable and you don't have to worry about getting suckered into a trade. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, launch this. And let me take a look real quick at the first trade actually happens on May 2nd. So it looks like we've got quite a few trades, May 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And again, just because you tell it to trade on a certain day doesn't necessarily mean it's going to trade. There might be some times in here, you know, between the 4th and the 9th that it may have been tradable, but we didn't get any volume spikes on those days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that we specified. And also in this time frame, in this little uh, block of time here that we have uh, identified as the, the time we want to trade. So uh, if there's certain markets, certain asset classes, certain things you want to trade, try this on. Absolutely uh, worth running some tests on. But first, we're going to go ahead and jump into a back test. We're going to watch this. It did say my first trade comes through on May 2nd. So we're going to go ahead and launch that. And uh, we're going to see what happens here. We're going to see how this plays out. Um, for some reason, my uh, window, my buttons are all messed up for some reason not sure why that looks like that <laughs> oh there we go it fixed itself okay all right so there you go you might have seen this happen so it's it's basically looking for uh this this candle means this is my signal candle and um let me turn on the tick charts the tick volumes there you go so you guys can see when it says I'm looking for the average seven candles going back. That's what I'm going to use for my calculation of my average. And you guys can agree that this candle right here was the 3x volume spike, right? So three times volume spike. And then it says we're going to we're going to count six candles. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to get short here and wait for that lower move there. And so that's basically what it, what happens. So this this obviously would be ideal to run inside of EPS and let it run so that it can uh, monitor these spikes again on ideally uh, from, from my tests. So that works really well on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And uh, if you've ever tried to manually day trade on these days, it is fairly volatile. And uh, most people would manually exit ahead of that because it's pretty crazy and there's such big, strong, violent, not violent, that's not the right word, volatile moves. <laughs> and so having a bot that could take advantage of that, not only take advantage of it, but help you profit from that wild, crazy, ridiculous moves is what I'm all about. And so I'm always looking and observing and monitoring and documenting and taking notes. I'm, some people say I'm a fairly observant person. And so I come up with these ideas I build them, I test them to see if they're really valid or if they're just, you know, some anomalies that happen every once in a while that aren't predictable enough. And so in this case, I've actually found the volume bot is very, very, very predictable. It does work really, really well. There are some settings, some things you guys can optimize. You can spend some time optimizing timeframes and all the dozen plus settings to determine how you want to run it, what you want to run it on, on what time frame, on what asset class on you know what testing date range and uh and that's the basics of how this works it does work long and short as well but that is the basics of how this works hopefully you guys enjoyed this please let me know if you have any questions and i will put a link for more information about this bot and getting this bot in the comments thanks so much